everyone, it's Mrs. Gifford here, and this is lesson 8-2, using the distributive property with quadratics. So after this lesson, you will be able to use the distributive property to factor and solve quadratics. So let's start right into example number one, and it is how do you use the distributive property to factor? Well, back in the previous lesson, we talked about how to factor monomials. So the first thing that we're going to do is factor each term. And I know that 27 can be broken down as 3 times 9, and y squared becomes y times y. 3 is prime, so I'm done. 9 is not. I'm going to break that down as 3 times 3. So I have 3 times 3 times 3 times y times y for the first term. The second term, I know 18 is broken up into 2 times 9, and then we have the y. 2 is prime, 9 is not, so I have 3 times 3. So my second one, my second monomial, can be broken down as 2 times 3 times 3 times y. And like the last lesson, we look at what they have in common, and in this case, they each have 3, 3, and y. And when we multiply that together, that becomes 9y. So the greatest common factor of each of those terms is 9y. So what we're going to do from here is take each term, and we're going to divide each term by 9y. So from here, I know that 27 minus, um, sorry, I'm going to bring my 9y out. We're factoring it. So 27 divided by 9 is 3, and y squared divided by y is y, plus 18 divided by 9 is 2, and then those y's cancel each other out. So completely factored, this is 9y times the quantity of 3y plus 2. We use that distributive property to factor out that greatest common factor. Okay, so let's do the second example or some more directions. It says, when can you factor by grouping? We factor by grouping when it's a polynomial and it must have four or more terms. The terms have common factors that can be grouped. There are two common factors that are identical or additive inverses of each other. So we're going to do a couple of examples that talk about factoring by grouping. Again, we look for polynomials with four or more terms. We've, we group them so they have a common factor to pull out, and then they must have um, identical or additive inverses of each other. So let's take a look at our next example. So how do you use the distributive property to factor? And in example two, we have 4QR plus 8R plus 3Q plus 6. As I look at this polynomial, I notice that I can pull both a 4 and an R out of this first one. So I'm going to group 4QR plus 8R together. And I also know that in 3Q plus 6, I know that I can end up taking a 3 out of both of those terms. So I'm going to group them together with parentheses. Okay, so now that we have these terms grouped, I'm going to ask myself, what is it that I can factor out of both 4Q and 8R? Eight, sorry, 4QR and 8R. I know that 4 and 8 are divisible by 4, and I know I can also pull an 8 out of each term. So I'm actually going to take that 4R outside. That's the greatest common factor from each of those terms. And then I think about dividing this term by 4R. And that leaves me with Q plus, and if I divide this by 4R, 8 divided by 4 is 2, and the R's cancel. I'm going to do the same thing with that second set of parentheses. I know that three, is, um, th 3 and 6 are both divisible by 3. So I'm going to divide each term in here by 3. That leaves me with q plus 2. Now what do you notice about what we have here? We have a q plus 2 in common with both parts. So now we're going to use the distributive property, and we're going to regroup this from here. Because they each have q plus 2 as their terms, we're actually going to pull that q plus 2 out, out of there. And think of it just like before, I'm going to divide by q plus 2. 
And on the left-hand side of this, it leaves us with 4R plus 3. So the big thing to look for is to make sure that you can group them with something that you can pull out of each part of the term. <clears throat> Find their greatest common factor. And then the goal is to have something left inside those parentheses that they both have either exactly the same or inverses. And actually the next example that I have is one where it's going to be inverses. So here's example number three. We have the expression 2mk minus 12m plus 42 minus 7k. Again, when I look at this first term, I know that I can take a 2m out of both of those. And when I look at this second, the third and fourth um, parts of this polynomial, I know I can divide them each by 7. So again, I'm going to group them. So I've got my 2m k minus 12m plus 42 minus 7 and as I've talked about, I already know with this first one, I'm going to pull out or um, factor out a 2m out of each of those terms. That's going to come outside parentheses. My 2m's cancel, and that leaves me with 12 divided by 2 is 6. So inside the parentheses with this first part, we have um, k minus 6. I'm going to go here, and I know that I can divide each of these terms by 7. So again, I'm going to pull that 7 out, and then I have 6 minus k. Well, what do you notice about what we have inside the parentheses? It's the opposite of what we have in the first one. So I'm actually going to keep the first one as is, and then instead of pulling out this positive 7, I'm actually going to change it so we divide it by a negative 7. So 42 divided by negative 7 is negative 6. And the negative 7 divided by negative 7 gives us a positive k. Now, why did I do that? That's because now I've created the same thing inside parentheses. Commutative property says I can rewrite this one. So they each have this k minus 6. And then what's left over? We have the 2m minus 7. So again, look for something that the parts have in common, factor that out. The goal is to try and get the exact same thing inside the parentheses. All right, last example for today is we're going to solve this one. This one has actually already been factored. So we're going to use the zero product property, which says I can take, as long as this product is zero, I can take each part and set them each equal to zero because we know that anything times zero is going to give us zero. So there's going to be two possible solutions for this for what d can equal. Split each part into equaling to zero and then solve using the symbolic method to figure out what d equals. So for the first one, I'm going to subtract six from both sides. And then I'm going to divide by two. So this first one is d equals negative three. And then with the second one, I'm going to add 15 to both sides. So I have 3D is equal to 15. And then my last step is to divide by 3, so I get D equals 5. So what we have found out here is that either negative 3 or 5 can be substituted into this equation to figure out what would give this equation a value of 0. So, last slide has to do with your summary, so take a minute and write your summary about what you learned with this particular lesson. Have a great day.